the interesting question then um, when we start thinking about this new technology that was deployed on 9-11, what does that mean geopolitically? I'm not sure it means very much paradoxically because, as I say, that you've got to get away from the, the kind of horizontal chessboard model of just thinking about states versus states. Um, my whole concept of the Omniwar um, revolves around the idea that the primary form of conflict now is not between different nation states and different ruling classes. It's between the ruling classes united and coordinated through their transnational deep state and us, the rest of humanity. So in that context, I'm not sure what you can really do with the kind of technology that was deployed on 9-11 that would serve any real helpful purpose in that war. In fact, quite the opposite. As I've said a few times now, they want to keep it hidden. Um, I mean, towards the end of her book, Dr. Wood talks about, she says they've now developed a method for um, the molecular dissociation of man, um, a technology which can cause things and people to come apart at the molecular level. And I just think how horrifying that is. And keep in mind that over a thousand victims of that attack on 9-11, the remains were never found. Uh, never, not even a fingerprint or a hair or anything for over a thousand people, over a third of the victims. No trace whatsoever. So this is the horrifying nature of what we're looking at. Now, again, it's very important from the perpetrator's point of view that we don't understand this because the level of anger and rage that would would come from a true understanding. So I don't think that they have any strategic interest, actually, in using this technology for anything other than the kind of thing it was used for on 9-11 to, 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 to drive fear. But if if you want to keep this technology hidden, then you wouldn't use it to blow up, or well, it's not blowing up, justify these towers, then, then the airplanes and the fire would have been sufficient. Well, the airplanes and the fire couldn't have done to the buildings what they did to the buildings. There would not have been a spectacular event. What they didn't, what they didn't bank on, what they didn't reckon on, was Dr. Judy Wood coming along a decade later and publishing her book and blowing this whole thing wide open because the, the techniques of perception management were so strong that not only was there this massive level of propaganda in favour of the official narrative, and not only was there the mainstream alternative narrative being used to, to control uh, perception, but the very nature of black technology itself means that billions and billions of views and downloads of this event have taken place on YouTube and other platforms. Everyone has seen these buildings going down, you know, hundreds of times probably. Mm -hmm. Does anyone really know what they're looking at, though? Does no. anybody really understand what that is? And this is part of the beauty, well, that's the wrong word, the ugliness of perception management through black technology, that if you deploy classified technology against the public, it won't understand what's happened. Think about the Arthur C. Clarke dictum, that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Exactly. You know, it just seems like magic. So if you say that two 110-storey buildings were just turned to powder, poof, who's going to believe that? So actually, I think they were very, very confident that they would get away with using that technology and the public would never really understand what had happened. It requires someone like Judy Wood to expose this and then it requires other researchers to actually back her up um, in order for this awareness to spread. But as we've seen, you know, we've been fighting this battle for almost a quarter of a century now trying to, to, to get to the bottom of this.